Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to episode number 68 of my lower league management playthrough in Football Manager 2016 with FC United. First game in this episode is at home against Scunthorpe. You can see we do have more home games coming, uh, so that is a good sign for us. Uh, last two games were away, uh, one in the FA Cup, uh, one in the league, and we did get wins there. Uh, we're on a pretty good streak of being unbeaten, but also just a lot of wins in general. That is very good to see. And you also may notice John A. Gordon is starting to score goals, but he's proving to be somewhat of a super sub. Look, he's coming on in games. Two games previously, though, he started and scored twice. So he's on some good scoring form, but I don't know who to start. It's a very uh, tricky kind of situation. Also, right now, uh, well, you know, we won in the FA Cup. There's going to be another FA Cup game. Actually, that's going to be like in the next episode because I've got three games to play. So that should be the first game of the next episode. But we're having a bit of breaks between games now, like a week break. So that's good for players to recover especially uh, previously there will be more games. Like, see, like, three-day break and everything like that. We don't really have that in the, well, until, like, Christmas. So that's a good sign, just before the new year. And then, yeah, kind of steadies like that for the most part anyway. So, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Graham Burke as well, who I did sign as a left winger. Oh, well, trying to play him in that position, of course, ideally, because I was looking for left wingers, then I saw him. But he can play striker also. And as that false nine, he's very creative. 10 finishing, definitely not his best attribute, but he's not a poor finisher at all. Uh, but he scored in the last game, had a very impressive performance, five key passes. So he's more that creative type, um, obviously playing in that false nine. So... Yeah, we'll stick with him, I think. And look, all these players are coming back as well, like Simon Thompson. You got Solomon Ottobor as well. But a lot of them we're giving, yeah, we well, all of them really. Those players with not good enough match sharpness, we're giving them some yeah game time. Simon Thompson, a bit disappointing going down in his attributes after uh, getting injured. So that's understandable. Also, once more, Dan Foster and Alan Frowen are going to be missing for international duty. Initially, I like that. Like. Yeah, initially for them getting some international experience, but it's kind of, uh, well, but it's not hampering results. That's the thing. But problem is, well, I wouldn't say we need another goalkeeper because you get a great out goalkeeper you can just put on the bench and we go with Alex Palmer, who's not terrible. When he's played, he's been okay and he's got potential. So, and he's, done, he's not even on wages, but when we play him, uh, we'll just see what is his appearance for a year, like 250 pounds, and then a new sub is 20 pounds, so nothing amazing, even like most games, like 20 pounds, uh, just for sitting on the bench is, is, is not major money, so yeah, I'm pretty happy just with him, and just these odd games, but I do think, I, I at least want to get a good youth goalkeeper in, like in our intake, and just have him there as a backup, instead of using a grayed out goalkeeper, because they're going to be terrible, as you can see, really low attribute, so in this year's intake, well, technically, it'll be next year, but this season's youth intake, yeah, we'll try and, yeah, just sign up a goalkeeper, regardless of his ability, as long as he's uh, better than that grade out quality. So, I think that's pretty much it. Tom Pearson getting another chance. He does really want to play a bit more, and he doesn't really disappoint. <laughs> like I've always said, his role ability is not really showcased as a right back. He does actually perform really well, and he's got potential in him. So, come on, boys. Let's win another game. So guys, once more, it is another boring half. There's been no highlights at all. We've only had one shot on target. Scunthorpe have had zero. And it's like, we're just waiting for something to happen. But nothing is. You know they're playing a very defensive uh, formation. So that's obviously nullifying us. We may have to go a bit more attacking in the second half. Or it could be ending this way. Not, yeah, like nothing. There was no, there was actually no highlight. Wow for a whole half. I remember once we didn't have one for a whole game. I think it was in this save. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, that was ridiculous. So we're going to have to surely go attacking. We're going to have to, yeah, turn it up a lot more. Uh, we'll go higher tempo and more direct passing, take out play out of defense. Yeah, because, and be more expressive because we need to take it to him a bit more than we were. Or yeah, we're not going to 
get three points here. I might end a draw, <laughs> but surely there'll be more highlights. I'm just going to say I'm not happy with the performance of the team, and I guess they're doing the job that they wanted to do here. They're not looking to score a goal. They're looking to take a point from this game. Boys, we have maybe one last opportunity while there's 10 minutes remaining. Win that. Yeah, well done, Stevens. Grant now. Richardson, the man we brought on. Oh, what an interception. Like I said, they're executing it well. And now they could get a cross in, and that's going to be a goal. You saw that from a fucking mile away. Why was he by himself? We shouldn't lose this. And now we are going to, because now they're going to go even more defensive than they were. They were just waiting for that one crossing opportunity. I'm livid with that. I saw it coming before the cross even came because he was by himself. What's that guy doing, Pearson? Oh, my God. You let him get free, and he wasn't going to miss. It was a cross, like the game sees it. Crossing opportunity. He's by himself. This opportunity has to be a goal. Fuck, oh, man. That, that's why I'm mad. That's really annoying. And plus, we've played well. Can we get a goal back? Because we don't deserve to lose this. Come on. Richardson, do something with it. Stanley, hit one, maybe. Harness. We're, no, we're not going to score. We're not going to score. It's not in the script for this game. Nah. We're going to go down. And not in a fun way. Nah, yeah. 20 second highlight. Unfortunately, nothing's going to happen from this. This is when you know the game too well. <laughs> you know, certain highlights aren't going to be a goal. That is annoying because I saw them as a team we should be beating at home especially. But, yeah. See, I'm not even mad that they kind of parked the bus in a way. Because they still counted. They played well. Credit to the manager, their tactical setup. In a way, outsmarted me today. Yeah, that side of thing. Yeah, they set it up perfectly to get the win. I was just, yeah, disappointed. See, even after that victory, they still... Oh, yeah, they're still in 20th. So, they executed that perfectly. But hey, we're still three points clear at the top of the table. <laughs> That's the positive. Okay, boys, second game of the episode now. Hopefully a better turnout, really. The first game was really disappointing. Regardless how Scunthorpe played, how they set up really defensively, we couldn't break them down. So maybe we're due to lose as well, due to have a game like that. So, best way to counteract that, come out today, away from home though against Port Vale, but yeah, just have a good win, Simon Thompson making a bench uh, position uh, after coming back from his injury and ease his way back in. Uh, I'm thinking maybe we could almost play with two strikers now. It just, it really depends, especially with signing John Marquise, just giving him some fitness in the reserves for now because, yeah, we have other strikers that are probably performing better. So, and having Graham Burke allows another winger to be brought on that is quality and not really a young guy in McHale who gets dropped now. He's just really lower in his attributes. Still has a high potential though. But Dan Foster, also Alan Frowen, and them also playing internationally for the under-21s for Wales. And if they're both starting, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, they are, because, yeah, they are playing, they're getting games. So, that's them getting more experience together in a way, as a partnership at the back. So that should be good for us as well. It's funny how those things work out. But yeah, submit the team. Uh, need to be looking for at least a better performance here today. Yeah, that's it. Again, very, very poor. Not many highlights, uh, especially for us. Nothing at all. Assertively, oh, what are we going to say? I'm far from pleased once more, but you can only say that so much. Okay, it's still fire them, up, fire them up, I suppose, but I'm not sure about going to attacking away from home because they could be a difficult team. We'll take out play out of defense and increase the higher tempo, but leave the passing directness on mix. I don't want to go direct exactly just yet, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. little change. I know I do make the same kind of changes generally. Maybe teams are becoming used to that. So, we'll see how it goes anyway. Okay, goal kick for Foster. Can we create something here? Hopefully, Dimitri to Grant. Now, out wide to Madison. Come on, Marcus Madison. Oh, what a great cross that was. Unfortunately, uh, the goalkeeper got to it, though. It was the right kind of thinking, which I like to see. 
Now, Stanley. Stanley's been so impressive. You can see his quality for this division. He's a quality footballer. And it's Gordon. He is hitting some form recently. Uh, he could be a form striker. Look, look, yeah, a lot of strikers are like that. Where, yeah, majority probably. Uh, when they're on form and they've got confidence, that's when they're scoring. But then when they go on a run of few games without scoring, yeah. Um, they aren't as good, but Stanley, a lot is being created by him. Harness, cheeky little pass, Gordon, nice finish. So guys, again, Jack Stanley has been pretty handy, but ratings-wise, it's been 6.8, just the average kind of rating, and he's on a yellow card. So we are going to be a bit more responsible here and bring on Craig Eastman, another defensive midfielder type, because uh, we've got to hold on. Uh, they are a tricky team. They're about mid-table, and yet at home, they've won games. they won their fair share of games this season. And George Grant will drop back to advanced playmaker on support so he can still be fairly creative. But then we'll put uh, Lewis Foreman. Well, we'll just switch their positions, defensive midfielder. But then, yeah, Foreman, you can see he's excellent. But we'll leave on support because maybe, yeah, can still create an opportunity for us. But, yeah, Eastman, his best role is the ball-winning uh, midfield uh, position, as you can see. He can still play some other ones decently, but ball-winning is his best. And it would be interesting on support as well. We'll try that. Two defensive midfielders on support. Obviously, yeah, one ball-winning midfielder and one the actual defensive midfield role but on support, and then Grant. So the three central midfield kind of roles, and a defensive midfield as well, but yeah, they're all on a support role. So we'll see how that pans out. It could work well. Again, experimenting with different things there. Craig Eastman coming on. He looks happy. Uh, he's been a, he hasn't been our best player or worst player. He's just been consistent. That's what you call a consistent performer. Someone like George Grant, no, he's not consistent. He's just amazing. <laughs> like saying he's consistent is almost just undermining how well he's been. He's just been oh, ridiculous. There's almost not words uh, to describe him, and he's a captain uh, for this game as well. He's amazing. I reckon he could almost be... Like, he's a guy I'd want to give a go to when we get to the Premier League. Like, those kind of heroes for your saves. Not someone... Well, I can't even, I forget their names. They're not... Like, Henry Collins, yeah? A lot of people liked him in the conference because he's the region we came through. He's not even at the club anymore because not good enough for this division. But, yeah, George Grant is a guy you'd want to give a go to. Even in the championship, if he's you don't think he's that quality, he would still step up. I could see him stepping up for us in the Premier League. Just being honest, the way he's going. Because he doesn't have a bad game. That's the thing. So he could have a decent game or two there. But anyway, he's on a yellow card now. I wouldn't want to take him off. But yeah, we just got to be a bit more responsible. Judging the situation in the game and a game coming. And also a guy who suits that role perfectly. Central midfielder in Aaron O'Driscoll. He's a guy that can only get better as well. Hard to believe he's only 21 because he's been at the club for a few years now. He does need to improve his finishing though. So he can take those chances. Because um, obviously he doesn't yeah, score a whole lot of goals. So there's a lot more to come from you. Uh, we already have a good connection <laughs> like as a manager to player uh, kind of a relationship. So here we head into injury time to finish off the game. Uh, doesn't look like we're going to score a second goal, but also it doesn't look like we're going to concede a goal also. So again, defense, so much credit towards them. A lot of good ratings there. Some defenders really stepped up, had chances to defend, and they did it. Oh my God, that was so close. Like, because there, I wasn't expecting a goal. <laughs> but that being so close scared me a little very good performance, though, assertively. Well done, lads. That was a good win for us. Majority of players seemed uh, delighted and extremely delighted. But, yeah, that was a good defensive performance. John A. Gordon scored a nice goal, but then defense, you know, those three players with the high rating, especially Tafari Moore, was excellent today. Third and final game of this episode now, guys, against Barrow, who are last. They've been terrible this season, dead last. They've only won two games. If we don't win this... I will be very, very disappointed. <laughs> we have to be winning this game. Really no excuses at all considering, yeah, the kind of team they are. They're just not good enough pretty much. 
it's crazy seeing the difference though. A couple seasons ago, uh, when we got promoted, well, last season it was our first season in the division, and you you can see the difference of quality. There's a team like that, and yeah, we're just so much better, <laughs> and we've only been in this division uh, for two seasons now, not even a full two seasons as well. Last season was our first. Uh, season in this division but anyway again fairly the same lineup I'm just considering bringing in Tom Pearson because he wants to play more and I feel as though how we're going this season yeah we have opportunity to I just don't know like is he ever going to be a really really good right back as much we're training him because he's got a good potential in him, or is he a guy we could make? I don't want to say sell on, because we probably, at this level, you don't sell on players. Like, you don't really see bids, unless they're a high potential region player. I guess he's still a guy with potential, but yeah, it's leading League One, isn't it? So, that's still a great player to have, with that kind of potential, to be a leading player in the next division. So, that's why I do kind of want to keep him, you know what I mean? But hopefully, yeah, we can... Well, we are getting the best out of him. I'm sure, like you guys, that would say, yeah, his rollability is not good. That's something I always have in the yeah corner of my eye as well. But anyway, uh, we shall get into the game. Only Jack Stanley, he's suspended, just picking up yellow cards. He's going to be a miss, but we should be able to get uh, the three points without him. Okay, guys, early opportunity here. This is what I like to see, an early highlight. Demetriou. He plays the ball in. Okay, it's cleared initially. Pearson finds Foreman. He finds Demetriou. Can we get a ball in? Oh, again, Gordon. He is in the form of his life right now as we make it 1-0. Only three minutes into the game. And Barrow, it is more of the same for them. Take a look at the replay now. Really well worked, patiently. Oh, look, no one seems to be at the game, <laughs> judging by the crowd. Oh, my God. But anyway, yeah, that was a very nice goal to score early today. Okay, corner. Pearson cleared by Wakefield. O'Driscoll to get it back to Pearson. Pearson, he went far post. No one was there. Foreman, Gordon! He scores again, but it's going to be an own goal to Wakefield. Uh, but I'm still going to give credit, like, for me, anyway, to Gordon, because he uh, kind of went for it. He made that defender go for the sliding challenge. So, well done. 2-0. Oh, no. John A. Gordon picks up. Oh, as soon as he's killing it, he picks up an injury. That's really disappointing. But I do want to click on him for a second. I do believe he is injury prone. Okay. It doesn't say it at the minute. But maybe because he hasn't been injured <laughs> for a while, that's why I said. But if you go to his history and you go to injuries, oh, well, he's only had one injury before, I suppose. But, yeah, I don't know. Well, anyway, look at reports. He's got potential to be a championship striker, remember? Yeah, said he has championship potential. But the thing is, he's 24 years old, so you don't see him growing so much. But he's still got potential in him. So he is going to continually get better. But what do we do? Do we early sub him? Oh, that's a terrible injury to get. As soon as he's on form, because maybe when he comes back from the injury, he won't be as good. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, Wakefield with the throw-in. It's Young's now back to Wakefield. What was the odds they were going to score almost immediately after we got an injury? <laughs> oh, it's just funny. See, that's where the crowd is. But anyway, Malhern... And you can see uh, they get disappointed with that, the crowd. <laughs> oh, okay, what we should... Oh, I don't know. Because his condition, is it seems fine. That's a challenge. If he can score with a dead leg, he must be going all right. We'll see. We'll leave him on for now anyway. He probably will end up being injured and missing a few weeks. But he seems fine anyway, condition-wise. Yeah, guys, that looks to be it. I suppose I'm still pretty happy uh, going in with a lead. Disappointed again. Uh, we conceded they had one shot on targets. But we'll go assertively and say guard against complacency. And I think I am actually going to sub out Gordon. I don't want him to get a big injury. And we'll bring in Simon Thompson. And we've got to change the role for Simon Thompson. We'll just give him a talk. Just say assertively, I have faith in you. Uh, that should go all right, I suppose. Yeah, he's motivated, all good there, but we'll have to change up the role. Simon Thompson, he'll be the target man on attack. 
And yeah, the big boy is back, <laughs> Simon Thompson. Uh, good to get a half in him uh, as well of game time. Okay, there's an early opportunity here, just a minute in pretty much to the half. Thompson, let's see how he looks. Plays it to Dimitru nicely. Grant now into Thompson. Thompson to Madison. Okay, ball. Gets the cross in. Perfect cross as Harness. Marcus Harness. Sixth goal of the season. And it's 3-1 suddenly. Early goal. Exactly what we want to get that back. Both, again, Marcus's combining. Oh, you got to love that ball to curl it around the defenders. And Harness finishes. Okay, throw in. Pearson. Phillips, Grant sprays it out wide to Pearson. That's a great ball, and Thompson finishes. And see, that just the awareness by Grant to play that right away is just, yeah, it's excellent. Uh, Thompson, nice for him to come up with the goal. See, Grant plays that ball right away because he knows the football we play, the style, everything like that. Thompson, uh, yeah, pretty simple finish there, though. Wakefield with the corner now. It's a set play. It's Brewster. Brewster trying to create that space. Ward. And we clear it. That was Pearson. See, that's what I mean. Pearson does really, really well. Oh, okay. That was a bit of a disappointment. Uh, Pearson uh, didn't win the header there. I was just about to praise his... He's like playing better defensively than his defensive attributes suggest. A bit, maybe a weakness there. Yeah, Mulhern did really well. Maybe his only blight on his performance, Tom Pearson today, because he's been excellent, really. Here again with the throw in, finds Thompson. He's going to get it back. Get a ball in, Pearson. Phillips, Grant. Oh, that would have been wonderful to score. Just another shot. We're really dominating late in the game. Even though we just conceded a goal, you can tell we're dominating. <laughs> Even after conceding, you feel like we're still the dominating team. Um, that's yeah, pretty obvious. A 4-2 win, uh, pretty nice, but again, like two shots, oh, oh, thank God that wasn't an injury to us, I would hate that, just laid in the game needlessly, but, yeah, they've only that's what hurts me, honestly, and like two shots on target, and yeah, we both uh, conceded uh, from those both opportunities, so yeah, a little bit of disappointment uh, for that, but again, assertively, I'm pleased with that. It was a really strong performance, but against a weaker side, most definitely. But yeah, like you can get happy about the win, but I'm happy how I've developed the team to be better, like clearly better than another team in this division, even though we only got promoted in the previous season, or yeah, the, the season before last. Like last season was our first uh, season in this division. So yeah, I'm really happy with my development I've done anyway, in terms of signings. Each season, George Grant again, 11 key passes, 88% passing rating. What a lad. So that player that scored a brace against us, I want to keep my tabs on him. He looks like a very, very good player. Really good at free kicks as well, 14. Pretty well-rounded in a lot of attributes for a striker. High determination, 23 with a bit of potential in him still. Good championship. <laughs> it's, they seem to be everywhere. Good championship potential in League 2. But we'll get a scout report on him because his contract is running out at the end of the season. And if they get relegated, surely he'll want to listen to a new contract. And yeah, there's only minor interest from another club in Leighton Orient. So, I think, yeah, what do you think about him as a signing? Not as good as John A. Gordon, but yeah, he's still got some very interesting attributes. And he, yeah, played well against me. So, oh, and John A., oh, yeah, he got that, yeah, dead lead. I almost forgot about that. But, yeah, he picks up dead leg, if I can say dead leg properly. <laughs> That's a bit of a tongue twister, um, surprisingly. But, anyway, he'll be back soon enough and recover from that dead leg. There we go. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoy the episode. Drop a like if you did enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time.